Next on BYUSN, big day, big media for Big 12 football. We're live from Arlington, Texas at AT AT&T Stadium where everything is, yes, bigger. It's all access from Big 12 Media Days. We'll hear from BYU head coach Kalani Sitake as well as coaches and players from Texas, Kansas, and whoever else we can fit in today. And with that, we welcome you to BYU Sports Station, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, live from Big 12 Media Days, yeah, home baby. of the Dallas Cowboys, AT&T Stadium in Arlington. It is Wednesday, July 12th. I am Spencer Linton. He is Dallas Cowboys locker room coordinator, Jerem Jordan. Amazingly, it smells good in here, <laughs> um, despite being the visiting locker room at AT&T Stadium. But, yeah, BYU last played in this venue in 2011 against TCU. That was a loss before that. It was Oklahoma in 09, a win. So um, some good vibes from 09 uh, in the stadium. But we could not be more excited to be here, obviously, being in the Big 12. Yeah. But being at Big 12 media days, it just it's getting real, like, Yes, BYU's in the Big 12, but it feels very real being here and being included in all of this, seeing the stretch Y on everything. This is going to be a ton of fun, man. We've waited 10 years of this show going into our 11th season to be in Power 5 football, and here, here we, we are. Here we go. 12 days into the Big 12. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to talk to BYU head coach Kalani Satake, as you mentioned, just an A-list guest lineup of players and coaches from opponents. And we're going to be here the next conference. three days, by the way. Let's go. we got you Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Hey, we're, we're all in. This media day segment, by the way, presented by Feastbox, donating 10% of every order to Full of Hope, a charitable organization that feeds hungry families. Okay, let's open up our interview segment in this live portion of BYUSN with Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers. Quinn, welcome What's to up, BYU Quinn? Sports. Yo, yeah. Th- thanks for opening doing, things up with us, How man. How are we doing? I feel honored to open it up here. <laughs> hey, we're stoked, dude. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, it's going to be a long day, but hey, it's going to be fun, though. I feel like you're on brand. You got jeans, you got boots. This is like what I would expect you, from you a look comfortable. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm trying to be. I'm <laughs> trying. I feel comfortable, though. Let's go. I think every BYU fan wants to know, now that you play for a former BYU quarterback, Steve Sarkeesian, what's that relationship and dynamic like with Coach Sarkeesian? Yeah, um, he's, he's a great coach, a great um, leader for the team. Uh, you know, what he's brought to – so this university has been great. Um, obviously, he's 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 won national championships. He's played the position that I play, um, and like I said, he knows what it looks like. He knows what it's supposed to be, uh, which ultimately is what you look for, and in, in the top guy and the top leader. So yeah, and obviously he he was a good baller. He's a good player yeah. at BYU. Has we, he reminded you about his <laughs> Cotton Bowl victory? He has. He has. <laughs> nice. Yes. That was such a huge win. And and we're old enough to have gone to the games when he was playing, which was super fun. And obviously, being at Texas, give us a sense of what it's like to be the Texas starting quarterback and the pressure of not only Texas, but obviously going to the SEC, want to win the league for the first time since 09 in the final year. You're the preseason pick. There's always pressure, but like, there's sort of a unique vibe it feels like this season for Texas. Yeah. Um, you know, I try not to look at it that way. Kind of not pressure. I mean, we, I'm playing a kid's game here. Uh, I'm trying to have fun like a kid. <clears throat> Excuse me. But. It's all fun, you know, uh, and ultimately, if you look at it that way, it, it'll probably work out because you won't be as stressed mentally. Um, but obviously, it, it's it's hard to kind of block out, you know, some stuff that's going on. Um, but you, you have to. Um, you know, I think I got, I got a great corner around me. I got great teammates to kind of lean on, and and uh, hopefully they can lean on me too. Um, but, yeah, like you guys said, I'm, I'm really fired up for this year. I'm excited. It's been, been a great offseason. Absolutely. Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You were rolling, and the Texas offense was rolling. Then you get nicked up and banged up a little bit. So uh, how, are, how are you feeling overall health-wise as, as you move into a new season? Yeah, I feel great. I really I really took a lot of time this offseason to kind of kind of get how I want to feel. Um, and this is the healthiest I've felt since, you know, probably when I was a kid, you know, just being all, you know, wobbly. But, no, I feel, I feel a lot better. Um, I got a good trainer in Chad Marr who, who's helped me out with some issues that I got going on kind of in the hips because I had double hernia surgery yeah. back in high school, uh, which obviously is not is no joke. It's no joke, and it kind of moved to my lower back. And, you know, uh, I'll give so much credit to, to Chad Marr. He's up in South Lake where I'm from. But um, he's helped me out a whole lot kind of kind of with, uh, you know, stabilizing um, and just feeling better overall. We were talking before the interview. Uh, you, you know Jake Oldroyd's brother? So we yeah, saying? we we he went we went to the same high school. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know him a little bit. He's he play he's, he's pretty good at golf. Is he pretty good at golf? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. 
Jake, it's been a while since it's been a while since I've seen him. But you know, the last time I did because. We went to the same elementary school, so yeah. <laughs> so, South Lake Carroll guys, McKay Jacobson, BYU fans know, uh, which is awesome. You you return a ton on offense. Obviously, Bijan Robinson's gone. Who he's with Tyler Algier, BYU guy with the Falcons. We're excited mm-hmm. about that connection. But you have your whole O line back. You got a ton of ballers led by Xavier Worthy. You have one of the best tight ends in the country, um, which is awesome. What is it going to be like to have this offense this year as the starting quarterback? Yeah, like you said, I mean, the biggest part of it is having all five of those guys back at the front of the line, um, you know, and some of those guys were true freshmen last year playing, and, you know, for for them to step up the way they did last year, I'm giving so much credit, and I'm excited to see what they do this year. And then in the receiver room, uh, I mean, the sky's the limit with those guys. Uh, they they made a decision. They want to be the be- They want to be one of the best uh, receiving uh, groups in the nation, and I I believe it. It's 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 very reachable for them, and you know, I'm excited. We got Ad Mitchell, obviously. Um, and then Jordan Winnington came back, decided to come back another year, which yeah. is absolutely huge. I mean, you know, I was begging him, please come back. <laughs> I mean, he's just, he's just one of those guys, though, you know. We uh, felt differently when we saw the news, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just. We're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. No, he's he's a baller. Um, and obviously he's good for the younger guys coming yeah. in, like Niblet and, and a couple other younger guys. But, yeah, I'm fired up for this year. There was a portion of the Texas Twitter mob, and so passionate, that felt a level of depression when you decided to cut your hair, Quinn. <laughs> so yeah. like, walk us through that decision because, like, that it had, like, a personality of its own almost. Was there a Twitter account or anything for it? Like, did anyone? Man, I don't have Twitter. Uh, I don't. I don't <laughs> That's probably good. Yeah, I don't. I gave the. I gave the password and username to somebody else, so I don't. I don't. I don't look at Twitter. Um, but you know, I definitely heard the noise for sure. So <laughs> it always comes. I mean, you know, they 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 loved it, but it was ultimately I looked at it like it was time for me to kind of grow up, kind of yeah, you know, get get myself you know right, and you know that was it was too it was too long, man. It was like touching my back. I was kind of weird. It was impressive, <laughs> Quinn. It was very impressive. Yeah. It, it was awesome. I don't know what conditioner you used, but it was, it was nice, man. October twenty eighth, BYU's going to play. At Texas, and they they played there in 2014. They played there in 2011. So there's a little bit of history within the last decade or so. What what's what's game day like at Texas for those who haven't been and, and the BYU fans that will go to that game? Yeah, I mean you're gonna expect a great crowd, great turn up, hundred thousand people. Um, you know if you're if you, you you have a good view of the city, probably uh, if you're sitting on the uh, on the north side. So uh, I mean it's gonna be a great environment, uh, a whole lot of fun. Um, Especially for BYU fans to kind of come down to Austin. You know, obviously there's a whole lot to do in Austin. Um, so, you know, before the game or after the game, you guys are going to have a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but, you know, being in DKR, personally, it's, it's it's nothing like it. Nothing like that rush when you're running out of the tunnel. So, I uh, hope you guys come and be loud. Yeah. Be awesome. Texas, of course, we chronicled, picked to finish first. BYU picked to finish 11th. The Cougars making a new transition. So, when you view BYU football, like what what is your perspective of, of what BYU brings to this conference this year? Yeah, I think it's great. Um, like you guys were saying earlier, you wanted to be a part of a, a big conference, and I think it's great for you guys to to come um, and be a part of the Big 12. I mean, we couldn't be more excited for, for the changes that were made by the administration. Um, and it's kind of cool to kind of switch things up and play, you know, different teams instead of playing the same, the same guys. Yeah. Um, and obviously – Coach Sarkeesian being at BYU, I'm sure he's pretty excited too. So it should be a good time. Quinn, great to have you on BYU Sports Station, man. We, we appreciate the time. You're great personality and uh, wish you the best of luck moving forward, man. Thank you, guys. Stay comfortable Thank in the booth, man. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate nice, you guys. nice to meet you, Quinn. I'm going to try. I mean, these are pretty comfortable. Luke Casey. Shout out, Luke Casey. <laughs> nice. Let's go. Nice. Let's go. I love it. Thanks, Quinn. All yeah. right. Still on the way from uh, Big 12 Media Days in Arlington, Texas, of course, we have the head football coach from BYU, Kalani Satake, and how he views an 11th place prognostication from the Cougars. This is BYU Sports Nation from Big 12 Football Media Days. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by Feastbox Global Grill, a unique dining experience featuring Texas, Hawaiian, and Korean meats. Time to feast. We are live from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Yes, we are, Spence. The beginning of Big 12 Media Days. Three days of BYU Sports Nation, beginning with today. And this is, as always, your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. We just talked to Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers. Fun guy. It's going to be fast and furious. His head coach, Steve Sarkeesian, is upcoming, as is BYU head football coach Kalani Satake. But right now, 
And uh, just a few minutes ago, we had a chance to sit down with the head coach of the TCU Horned Frogs, who went to the national championship last year. I heard that, Spence. Unbelievable. Uh, here is Sonny Dykes on TCU and his relationship with BYU of sorts. Coach, as you start again after what was just a magical season and uh, really didn't end that long ago, where do, you, where do you go to find the you know the emotional fortitude to, to get going again after all you expended last season? Yeah, it was it was a grind. I mean, you know, 15 weeks. Um, it was it was a blast, though, obviously, and it was fun fun thing to be a part of. It was the first time I had been involved, you know, in the college football playoff and just playing for that long. And and we learned a lot. I mean, we really did we learned a lot as a program. Um, you know, a lot of things we can take from it. And so that's what's exciting is you go and you have that and it happens to you. And now you feel like you're more prepared the next time you have that opportunity. And, you know, that's the whole thing that you want to keep doing is just get better, you know, get better every day and, and get your program better and, and put it, put your players in a better situation to be successful. And it's uh, there's just so many decisions that you make along the way. And some of them are good and some of them are bad. And, and then the, the, the thing you always have to do is adjust from there and, and, uh, you know, make sure you get better. You certainly have experience coaching against BYU. There was a game, I believe, in 2015 uh, back in uh, at Cal. Yep. Um, now BYU's in the league. What do you think of BYU and the new additions in the league this year? Yeah, you know, I've uh, had plenty of uh, opportunities to coach against BYU. Really, uh, went going back to my days as an offensive coordinator at Arizona, I mm-hmm. think, you know, I got hired at Arizona to kind of fix the offense, and, and we went came to Provo. In my first game, and I think we had about 30 yards at halftime. Uh, <laughs> so right. Right. Yeah, and I remember thinking this may be the shortest uh, tenure as a play caller in college football history. Um, and then a year later, we played them in the in the uh, Vegas Bowl and, and won the game. And in oh seven oh eight, yeah, yeah Willie Tui Tama, yeah. yeah, Willie Tui Tama and Rob Gronkowski, yep. and you know had a pretty good little uh, group of players. And so you know ha- had those experiences against them, and as you said, uh, played them at Cal and. Really, they cost us a, a, going to a bowl game. I think my second year at Cal came in and beat us, um, you know, at the end of the season and, and didn't make a bowl game that year because we lost the game. But, look, I've got tremendous uh, uh, respect for BYU. I mean, my dad uh, and Lavelle Edwards were close friends. And, and so I grew up a BYU fan watching Ty Detmer, um, you know, being from Texas and, and his dad being a high school coach and, and kind of knowing the Detmer family. and. So I've always been a big fan of the program, have a lot of respect for him, really like Kalani. I think he's just a great guy, a really good football coach. And so, you know, I'm excited about the addition. I mean, it's, you know, BYU has a tremendous uh, history uh, of playing great football. I think, the, you know, they're going to bring a lot to the Big 12. And, and so I think we're all excited about competing against them. And, you know, you know what you're going to get when you play a BYU team. They're going to be big and strong and tough and, and play hard. And, and so, you know, we're excited about about what they bring to the league. All right, Coach, we'll finish with this in about 15 seconds. What's the one bit of advice you would give to Kalani Satake? Oh, I mean, look, I'd probably ask him for advice instead of give <laughs> advice. I mean, you know, I think that the, the league is fun. I mean, it's a, it's a good league. It's a really good league from top to bottom. I, I think that's the thing that, that, you know, really surprised me. I think being here first, first year as, as a head coach in the league was just there's not a layup. You know, every single team in the league is very good, very competitive, they all have their own brand of, of football and style, and uh, and you better be prepared to, to play well every Saturday. And if you don't, you're going to get beat. I mean, you just your guys have got to go out and they got to play at a high level week in and week out. Coach, pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for the time. Thanks yeah, we later. appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Good to see you guys. TCU head coach Sonny Dykes and his Horn Frogs picked to finish fifth in the preseason poll. Of course, BYU picked to finish eleventh. There, there's a lot of turnover for sure, especially for TCU. Uh, they, Eight draft picks. Eight Amazing. draft picks. Um, but they're going to be good again, too. Like, what TCU did last year is unbelievable. It gives BYU hope. It gives teams like BYU hope that, yeah, preseason, you're picked low. They were fourth to last. What is BYU in the Big 12 again, by the way? Third or fourth to last. Yeah, that's exactly right. At yeah. 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. Fourth to fourth last, to exactly. Yeah, so it, it gives you hope that you can exceed expectations. And I think we're going into this season, Spence, with the proper approach, which is – we don't know when it's going to be. We don't know how tough the Big 12 is going to be. If 2021, if last offseason, which we were very hyped about, it didn't live up to expectation, if that team was walking into the Big 12 now, they still might be on the fringe of the middle, right? I would. Where would you have that team? I would have them like seventh. Yeah, probably. 
six or seven. Six or seven. As, as good as that team was. As good as that was. And yeah. think about the NFL talent that BYU produced. Three draft picks, none of which were round six or seven. Like 2021's draft was special, but like two or three of those come in the seventh round. You kind of sneak in there. You have the number two pick, obviously. I'm excited about what, what BYU can do in the next couple of years. I don't expect BYU to be a top five team in the league this year. But what if they are the TCU like what of last year? I'm not saying they're making the college football playoff, but I'm just saying what if BYU can go eight plus and kind of surprise even us who know the team very well of go of going okay. Now a surprise could go the other direction too. Like if BYU goes four and eight, we are surprised that it didn't go as well as we thought. A CBS Sports article last week discussing the best and worst case scenarios for each of the Big Twelve teams. Yes, pretty much summed up how I think. Where everyone in the BYU fan base is. And you They're, said, what, five to eight? Five yeah, was your I number, right? Yeah, I that spectrum. Maybe I agree five, with that. Five to eight. I think four is probably the low end. Like, some injuries, you lose some close games. Like, what did TCU that se- do that separated them? They won all these close games. Yeah. Like, l- like That's what it takes. Yes. That's what it the takes. The greatest BYU teams pulled out these tight wins in tough competition. Multiple times in the season. Think about 14-1 and one, BYU in 96. The opener, you have to come back in the last couple of minutes to beat Texas a and Wyoming, you you get a field goal as time expires to get to overtime Jeremy, and then make a field a goal. A three-point win over SMU that season. I forget about that, right? But it happens. SMU, Sunny Dykes before TCU. There's a connection. And then, of course, in the Cotton Bowl against Kansas State, you have to pull off a back and forth game where sure. in the fourth quarter you have to score. It it and even you look at 1984, like Hawaii. They had more one score games than you'd think. It wasn't like BYU just blew everybody out. You have to you have to be on the high side of the one score games. Can BYU do that? Because look look, if BYU makes a bowl game this year, we good man. We don't need, we don't need some crazy run or challenge for the conference title. Like this year is such a weird year. It would be. Weird enough, if it was just the four coming in, like, oh, it's new, it's different, what is this like? Not everybody plays each other. Remember, this league has been fun in that everybody played each other because they had ten uh, teams, nine conference games. Yeah. Now it's different. BYU doesn't play a couple of teams. But you have the Texas dynamic and Oklahoma of we're out next year. Are they trunky, to use a missionary phrase? Are they bigger than this, going to the SEC the next couple of years? Texas hasn't won this league since 09. Like, Oklahoma had a super down year. Yeah. Like, yet they're one and three in the preseason poll. Like, everybody expects them to do well this year. I get the Texas thing. They return a ton. Yeah, it makes perfect talent. sense. Every year they deserve to be the preseason On pick, paper, probably. it makes perfect sense. But I feel like more so than ever this year. Yes. It makes sense. There is parity in the league, but the talent gap and sort of the who returns and what's their gap yeah. is big for Texas. Oklahoma, I don't know what to expect from them this year, by the way. I expect Kansas State to be good. Texas Tech should be good, too. They return a team that lost some close games. I believe all five, maybe four of the five were decided by yeah. one score last year. TCU at five, Baylor at six. Baylor had a down year. Oklahoma State's interesting, too. They got a first-place vote, by the way, in the media poll. Um, they're at seven. UCF is expected to be the best of the new four. Gus Malzahn's there. Used to be at Auburn. You got a great quarterback. They've, they recruit really well in Florida. Okay, Kansas at nine. If Kansas had any kind of defense... They'd be in the top five. Like, their offense is unbelievably good. Their like, quarterback is the preseason offensive player of the year in the conference. We live in a universe where Kansas yes. has the best quarterback in the league. Jalen Daniels. We're hoping to talk to him later in the program. Is Yes, yeah, slated, we think. We're, we're going to try and get him on the show today. Yeah. yeah love, love, would love to talk to him. We would love to talk to him. Yeah. But, yeah, referencing again quickly that, that, that CBS Sports article, <laughs> it said BYU is a team that could win zero games in conference. <laughs> And they're a team that could make a run to the Big 12 championship. Like, that's the spectrum. <laughs> I would like to think that the high end is that high. But I, this year I'm a little hesitant to embrace that. Also, I'm it's not a whole gonna, lot of we don't know. Uh, don't but know. Zero, zero ain't happening and no. nine ain't happening. Come on. There's or, way too much talent on this BYU team to go winless in conference. I that think BYU, never happen. BYU gets at least three wins in league. At worst. If not, hopefully five. Yeah, at worst, three wins in conference. I'm telling Thanks. you, it's not going to be worse yeah, than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. Cold take us, I dare you on that. Yes. Um, it, it, what a fun day. This, this is We're a, just getting this, started. This is a fun, fantastic Let's time. Let's go. Okay. Uh, still to come on the show, uh, we are attempting to get Texas head coach Steve Sarkeesian and former BYU quarterback legend 
on the program. We already talked to his quarterback, Quinn Ewers. You just heard from Sonny Dykes. More A-list guests on the way from Arlington, Texas, and AT&T Stadium. This is BYU Sports Nation from Big 12 Media Days. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to Big 12 Media Days in Arlington, Texas. The Longhorns picked to win the conference. We just spoke with their quarterback, Quinn Ewers, and we are now pleased to welcome in the head coach of Texas football and former BYU quarterback legend, Steve Sarkeesian. Coach, great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. Appreciate you guys having me on. This is uh, kind of a welcome home in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're tied for first for the people that like you the most. <laughs> As a former BYU guy, but... Yeah, obviously you've had a tremendous coaching career. Uh, people remember you were 95 and 96 with you. What's it been like now going into year three at Texas where, hey, there's a unique dynamic in the last year of the Big 12 going into the SEC next year? Uh, it's been a great journey. You know, this is uh, obviously University of Texas, special place. And uh, humbled, honored to be the head coach here. Um, we've been trying to build something here that will be sustainable for years to come. And I think we've we've got ourselves in 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 a good position with the with the players on our roster with the staff continuity, uh, and we're going to need it. This is a this is a really tough conference, really from top to bottom. There's really good teams, really good coaches, and uh, it's always always a challenge in the in the Big Twelve to to go from from September all the way through into into December and, and try to be on top. Your quarterback Quinn Ewers is a, is a cool character, right? Really relaxing, and he told us he's like, look, I'm just, I. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to to enjoy this game. Because, playing a kid's game. Yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing a kid's game. What makes him unique of all the great quarterbacks and offenses you've worked with? What makes Quinn unique? Well, he has unique arm talent. You know, when you just when you watch him throw, he's not your prototypical robotic quarterback that does every drill exactly right and his footwork and all that. He can make every throw from one knee to one foot to two <laughs> feet to to whatever that looks like, and th- and that makes him definitely unique. Uh, but I, but I do think he's much more than that, though. Too, I think he's got great rapport with his teammates. He's yeah. got he's got tremendous work ethic. Um, he puts in the time and the effort. Um, but he's the same guy today. We show up to media days, and he's he's got his his creased jeans and his cowboy boots yeah, on. You know, he it. is who he is, and that's what I love about it as well. That he's very comfortable in his own skin with who he is. When you were at BYU, did you think, hey, I want to be a quarterback, or, or sorry, I want to be a coach later? And how much sort of influence? At that time, did you get from the BYU offense and the history there? Well, that was that was a great time. Like I, I had unbelievable rapport with Coach Edwards and and Coach Chow at that time, and I knew at that time I was not the most physically gifted guy. Like they, they had coached a lot more, you know, physically gifted quarterbacks than I was at that time, and then a lot more have come after me. So I had to find a niche to play the game where I could be. What I was, we used to say it all the time: the the fastest mental player on the field every play and that's how I tried to play and to do that I had to pick their brains all the time and uh, it worked for me Uh, I didn't know at that time that I wanted to be a coach Uh, I had people telling me that that's what I should do Uh, inevitably you start to you start to realize that you have a passion for it and then you know the history is what it is You, you get involved and you, you're fortunate enough to get around good people and coach good players, and you follow the right path, and it, and it works out. But at that time, those were great coaches, man. And the, the style of play, the you know, we didn't run the ball maybe like other people did, but we we moved the football effectively sure. because of an efficient passing game. And uh, it's always been something I've held on to. Hey, yeah, you ran it pretty well against Utah that season. Just just gonna that throw was the, a that, fun one, dude. I had 12 pass attempts <laughs> that know, game, man. I'm thinking like. 12. I'm like, here it is, man. I want, I get to redeem myself. The year before, I threw four picks against him. Yeah. Okay, I didn't forget that. And I was like, here we go. We're we're going up to Rice Eccles, man. We got, we're going to was... take down the Utes. I threw the ball twelve times. <laughs> now, there, was, there was snow everywhere, believe me. But but Ronnie Jenkins uh, and Brian McKenzie, they, they, awesome. they had a heck of a day that day. That that team. was special. What what do you remember the most from that '96 team? Because to us, that's still. 
I mean, you talk about the national championship team. they got to be up there. 83 is up there. 96 is one of the greatest teams ever at BYU. Yeah, what I remember about that team was a lot of it was the off season. You know, the year before, uh, we had a good team. Um, I think we went like 8-4 and four or something yeah. like that. You finished well against it, Fresno State, and, you specifically. And we tie for the conference championship. But we didn't get selected to go to a bowl game. Different era. And, and we essentially broke the streak. And it was like 20-some-odd years where BYU had gone to a bowl game. And so I think we all kind of that, – that galvanized us in a sense of, man, we got something to go prove. And we had to start off. We played A&M in week one, uh, you know, came to Provo, and we got a big win. And we went on a, a heck of a run in, in, a, in a really cool journey together, culminating here in Dallas – winning the Cotton Bowl against Kansas State. So that was a really tight-knit group. Um, there may have been more talented BYU teams, but I don't know if there's been one that was as tight and together as that one was that won so many big games along the way in that season. Steve Sarkeesian, the head football coach of Texas, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, as, as you look at the preseason prognostications, and I know it's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, media's going to do their thing, they're going to say what they say, but – they again have tabbed Texas has the team to beat. How do you approach that, especially this year, the final year of Texas in the Big 12? Well, I, I think there's two things to what you said, and then I'm going to dive into it. You said again picks te- pick Texas. The last time Texas was picked to win the Big 12 was in 2009. And you did. Yeah, I know, but but it, it, you you know a lot of times there's a misnomer of what yeah. his the expectations have been here. But I will also say this: that's why I came to Texas, and I think that's why a lot of the kids that we've recruited are here now. Is you know we we've got a great brand, we've got a great platform, um, and, and we're in a tremendous conference. And so you come here because you want those expectations, you want those opportunities, you want to play in those big games. And so uh, expectations are what they are. The reality of it is what's going to define us is the way we play in the fall. Um, and so this stuff's great, you know, and, and, and what I love about it is I love college football. I love the fanfare. I love the excitement. Media Day signifies football's right around the corner. Uh, but ultimately, we, we've got to put it on the field, and, we, and we've got to play good football, and we're going to need to play good football uh, if we want to be champions. Well, we're looking forward to October 28th, the DKR. That'll be yeah. a lot of fun. It'll be great. I'm excited for it. Uh, it's, uh, it'd, be, uh, it'd be good for a lot of people. and be great to see a lot of people as well. Coach, we appreciate the time. We know you're a busy man. Uh, BYU fans love you, and that is probably a huge understatement. So we appreciate the time. Your quarterback spoke glowingly about you and said that you've reminded him about the Cotton Bowl win a time or two. So. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to know. Well, you know, we, that's where we play OU every year yeah. is at the original Cotton Bowl. And uh, so whenever, when I walk out there, I always, you know, I'll find a player to, you know, I came back. We were down. We were down two yeah. scores. We threw two touchdowns. Came back and win. Man, it was awesome. Like James and I, cut it right and here. by the way, I said, and if you really do your research, I got a 15 yard unsportsmanlike but conduct lasso. penalty. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot that story, went into right? that. I yeah. said, so I wasn't perfect either. Just so you guys know, uh, it was <laughs> worth it. It, it, it was, was absolutely it. worth it, yeah. Coach. Thanks for the time. Thanks, we all right, guys. You. Thank you. Up next on BYU Sports Station, we'll keep our interviews uh, rolling with the head coach from BYU, Kalani Satake. How does he feel about the 11th place prognostication and why the Big 12 logo on the BYU uniform means something extra special today? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. We on a mission. You ready? Let's go. We on the mission, yeah, we on the mission. The mission is to win and destroying competition. And BYU wins it. Called to serve in the Lavelle Edwards <laughs> Stadium mission. <laughs> nice. As the words say in the song, we're on a mission. We're on a mission. BYU football so is mature. very much on a mission into the Big 12 Conference. How fun was that with Sark? Was, it's awesome. I have wanted to talk to him about so many of the things we finally got to talk to him about for years. Like I that, could, that we was fantastic. Gone an hour. Yes. Uh, and Thanks I love for his, taking the time. I great. love his attention to the details of those specific games in 96, his stats. He he brought up the fact he's like, I only threw 12 passes in that game. Yes. Yes. I wonder if he understands how much we like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You and I are like 13 and 14. Oh. Uh, Going to those games, he and, was and now my we guy. Get, and now now we're going to be in the same league. Like we've rooted for Sark his whole coaching career, wished the best except for October twenty eighth. Like 
let's go. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, huge show happening, uh, in case you were wondering here. <laughs> From a visiting, is this the biggest show we've ever done. A visiting this, locker room. This is this right is, there, right? This is the number one show in viewer Sports Nation history. Like importance, Big scale, Twelve football, media where we is. are, who we're talking to. Yeah, we p- should submit this one for an Emmy. This, p- okay, <laughs> T- Timmy, don't mess it up. Okay, you're doing great. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Uh, he is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. And uh, not too long ago, just to add to this amazing guest lineup, we had a chance to speak with BYU football head coach, you know, because we cover the Cougars. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, Kalani Satake, oh, about how he feels about this whole setup in Texas and BYU's implementation into the Big 12, the logo on the jerseys, being picked to finish 11th, all that and more. Here's Kalani Satake, two on one on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, I think we are 12 days into BYU being officially a member of the Big 12. Oh, you step we are. into yes, oh, Twel- that's, 12 that's days, nice, right? BYU being in the Big 12, you step into AT&T Stadium and you see this setup. What are your initial reactions and impressions to everything that's going into this? Oh, just excitement. I mean, I, I'm so excited, and, and this is more of the fan in me. You know what I mean? So I, I mean, I can't imagine, um, like as a young boy that this would be in, in the mix. And so now that we're here, I'm just really excited for the fans and the opportunities that they're going to have to, uh, I think they're the best part of, of, of BYU and, and athletics. And so I just want to show them off a little bit, you know, and, and um, th- this type of platform, this type of arena and these type of places, I mean, this this is what it's all about. And I like the innovation and the creativity that, that the, uh, the leadership of the conference has shown. And so I'm really excited about it. I just... I regret that I missed the the celebration. You know what I mean. I was I was trying to do my uh, fatherly duties. Hey, we get it. Yeah, but uh, but I watched it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so um, just hoping to have some more celebrations as as we go throughout the season. Yeah, I saw your comments on the feed. I was like, oh, there's Kalani. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you, listen, we've tried the team, the the broadcast, uh, the market, everything. We've tried our best in independence to do as big as we possibly could. What's it like to plug into a league like this and be at AT&T Stadium and see the sort of grandeur and innovation and plug into a league like this? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the first thing is just appreciation that, that, that we're here. And uh, I, I can't help but think about the, all, all the, the, the people that were involved in all of it. And then it's not just the people that, that are here or even um, the administration leadership, but the people even before. And so I keep thinking about Lavelle. You know, it's it's a really cool feeling for me, and and uh, to think about all those that have played in the past and the alumni. I'm hearing uh, so much excitement, and energy from people that have played before, and and the, and the fans. And I mean, they're all fans, but it's, it's just the uh, the energy you can feel it. I know you guys can feel it. Oh, yeah. And it's 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 almost so thick you can you can just grab it. You know, that's so. the humidity actually. Is that yeah. what it is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, it's and 105 make, and, this week. And it makes you sweat, so that's energy is the humidity. Okay, okay like here it. we go. Yeah. <laughs> now, Kalani, you've been on quite a journey here. And uh, at BYU, correct me if I'm wrong, in 1994, the Cougars were still a member of the WAC. And then you serve your mission. You come back. They're in the Mountain West at the end at of the your end. career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, You pick up BYU as an independent, now in the Big 12. You also coach in the Pac-12. But to see the Big 12 logo on a BYU uniform, what type of emotion does that does that bring to you, given your history with Lavelle and everything that you've done and all the conferences you've been involved with? Yeah, I, I think well, and even even through um, independence, you just you when you watch and you play against other teams or you're watching football, you see the different logos that are on there and the the uh, you know the the basically the the label of P5, right? And you're like, man. That's pretty cool. And then being able to go to all these different venues and see these teams that have a P5 label on their, on their uh, you know, a brand on their jerseys. And now to see it connected to our stuff, it's like, it's really cool. You know? <laughs> like, here we go, man. And, and, and it feels big time. But I, I want to make sure that when, you know, that we're not just happy with being invited and that we represent well in, in many, many ways on the field of competition, but also and who we are. Let's remember what, what got us here. And, and, and it's us being unique and, and different, but also highlighting the fact that, that what we stand for and, and, and the things that we represent. So uh, I think we can do all that, get everything accomplished, and and uh, even have, have uh, some you know positive, wonderful memories. So I think it's going to be, I, I like that we're here, but I, my mind's focused on 
with appreciation. I mean, today is just showing for appreciation, but it's like, okay, let, let's make sure that we, we give everything we got and that we represent well. And, um, and that, that even means competing on the field. So the competition manifested itself initially with this preseason poll, BYU 11th. A um, lot of unknown, right, going into the season, not only about how hard the league will be, but kind of how all the 21 transfer portal guys mix in. What's your reaction to kind of expectations from the media in the league? Yeah, I, you know, I, I never really worry about that, but I, I look at the last three years and how there's six different teams that have played for the championship. Wild. A lot yeah, of and so exactly. So there's, there's, a, there's not a, a wide gap between them all, and so I know that the new teams coming in are going to be um, excited and and energized to, to represent. So it's going to be a, it's going to raise the level of competition even more. But I'm excited to see what we how we raise our our comp, uh, competitiveness. You know, so um, it's going to be fun, man. I, I uh, I'd be worried if they were if they were spot on with their predictions. Yeah. You know, but so far that from what I'm seeing, that's they're not really. You know, then they haven't been spot on. So. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> every, TCU was every, near the bottom last year. They played yes. for a national championship. They were fourth to last. Everyone wants to be the TCU, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's kind of the hope and the goal. But as you look at Big 12 competition, BYU's played a ton of Pac-12 teams in the recent past, and there have been a few Big 12 teams sprinkled in there with Baylor and West Virginia in 2016. But mm-hmm. how would you define just Big 12 style of play overall? Well, I think it's gone through phases, and so right now you see in high-powered offenses. And um, but you, I've been around these coaches uh, for the last couple of years, and then I've known a, a number of them for many years with all the coaching events that we've been a part of, and I've been really impressed with all of them. And so I know they're they're great leaders, and I know they'll have their teams ready. And so um, you know the the, the competition is going to be it's going to be up there, and, and that's. So what we tried to do in, in Independence is try to. I told Tom, let's get them all. Let's, let's. Yeah. There's some lessons that we have to learn right now, and in, in, in this is anticipation that maybe something like this will happen. And as he worked with his staff to put together a schedule, all I wanted to, all he needed to hear from me was, "Yep, let's go." And uh, so even even some of the times that we didn't we didn't work out in our favor, there's a lot of lessons that we learned as a program. I don't think you can you can understand unless you just go through it. So we're trying to simulate what this would be like, and uh, now we're here. Let's let's see what happens. I think we've I've been really impressed with the leadership and, and the people that I worked around with at BYU, at BYU. And so now let's let's see how this all comes up. Let's see how our preparation has worked out, and and um, especially the last couple of years we've known that this is going to happen. And so you you saw the the sense of urgency even more to get better in, in a quicker pace. And so here we are in 2023, and let's ready to roll. I've been calling for tougher schedules for a long time, Colin. You know this. Um, <laughs> the, the, the ramp up ended up being what we wanted, right, which is exciting. If there was no P5, it would Yeah, anyway, another day. Uh, <laughs> Kingsley Suamatia is the, uh, the Coug on the all preseason team. How do you feel about him being mentioned as one of the best linemen in this league, which is a pretty big accomplishment? Yeah, he's one of the best linemen in the country, and um, a lot of people know it. He knows that there's a lot of expectation on him, you know, and so um, we're, we're just happy with what he's done for us and, and what he continues to do for us. So we'll we'll uh, build off of that, and and, and um, you know he's he's in a, a group of O of O linemen that are that's going to be a crazy competition there. So there's there's a lot of great players there, and they're going to be fighting for playing time. And uh, I, I imagine that we're going to have the best five on the field, and I'm, I'm excited that he's leading the charge. You're looking sharp in your uh, jacket and tie. Was this a was this a Kalani decision, or did this come from somewhere else that you all show up in jackets and ties? Well, uh, I mean, I, I, the other guys the guys look great. They're in suits. I'm I'm in a sports coat and and uh, <laughs> slacks. You know, I'm I like to say I'm in between sizes, <laughs> so I'm not going to get anything. You know, but I, I I realize I've been saying that for 20 years now. So. Yeah, I still have the suit that I got, you know, the size suit that I got married in, in my closet with the, the thoughts that someday I'll fit into it. So someday. one day, one day, I'll be on Sports Nation with in my, your suit, my you're... old original suit from 2002. I love it. Yeah, I but love until, it. until then, I'll just I'll do my best <laughs> adjustments along the way, guys. Your best is good enough. Thank you. Exactly. I appreciate that. <laughs> Kalani, great to have you with us. Uh, obviously, we're super excited. The fan base is super excited, and uh, can't wait for the future. Let's go, go Cougs. 
Hey, big dreams for Kalani. The suit in mind. And also Big 12 football. Bi- well, big wouldn't be the word. <laughs> Small dreams? <laughs> big dream, you're right. Slim? It's fitting? Slim. <laughs> big it's, a, dream? it's a big dream to want to get into that yeah. slim fit suit. Yeah. yeah. Listen, um, one, one element that we need to sort of emphasize here is this isn't Kalani's first time coaching in a Power 5 league. He was at Utah for a long time as a linebacker's coach. Takes over as the defensive coordinator in 2009. This is a guy that's played Power 5 football, competed uh, as a coach in that regard. This isn't a, you know vastly, crazily new to him. He was with a team that transitioned into a Power 5 in Utah. BYU was better equipped to excel quicker than Utah did. Granted, Utah's had a really nice run the last decade. But, again, we've said it. Two of the first three years, Utah went five and seven. Years yeah. two and three. Yeah, and like, Kalani alluded to that. He said, look, Tom, yeah. we've we got to ramp up the schedules. In case this happens, we've got to get ready. And, and listen, I complained about, like, what's the point? If I had known that P5 was sitting there a couple years later, then it makes sense to do that. And so that's why, uh, you know, Tom Holland makes probably, you know, a million times more money than I do. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy. We're having fun. It's all good because BYU is ready for this. Um, it doesn't mean that it will manifest itself in like 8-5. and five. BYU is, I think, as ready as it probably could possibly be. BYU is going to take its lumps the first couple of years. But I expect in year four, five, six, now BYU is competing for a Big 12 title. Maybe it's year three. Like, BYU is going to recruit. We're going to see a different BYU. BYU has sure. always been different in its approach, and it will be forever. But this offseason, Spence, we've seen a different level of BYU. They hit the portal in a different way, 21 yeah. dudes. They're going to be able to get guys they haven't been able to get. They're going to be able They've to pay assistance. They've already got them. Yes. They've been able to pay assistance like they haven't before. And now you're going to get a different version of BYU that we've never seen. Like, may, the best sustainable version of BYU ever is, is awaiting. It's not the 80s. It's not that we're going to surprise everyone and have this unique offense and 5'10 quarterback that can win the Heisman. It's not that version of BYU. It's going to be the best version we've ever seen of BYU in the next couple of years to come. Well, you referenced uh, Utah and their their jump, and Kalani's involved there at, with the Utes. They went 8-5 and five in year one. Yes, they did. Yeah. But then 5-7, five 5-7. Seven, five seven. So Let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do 5-7 and seven ever. Like, listen, there will be a 2017 in here somewhere where yeah. it's like, oh, BYU didn't have it that year. But there's going to be a 9-4 and four in there somewhere where BYU's competing for the Big 12 title. Like, you, you give and take. Like, it hasn't been all strawberries and uh, cream at, uh, you know, in Pleasant Grove for TCU. Like, they've had some bad years, too, but they had last year. Yeah, there, there's always that. Yeah, the the ebbs and flows are a little more dramatic in a Power 5 conference. Yes, I think we're going to have more a uh, few more seasons where maybe BYU didn't make valleys. a bowl game, but we're going to compete for a Power 5 yeah. conference championship. Yeah, peaks and valleys can be a little bit more dramatic, understandably. Up next, we wrap up what's been a remarkable BYU Sports Nation. I'm not sure what the specific episode number is, Jaron, but we need to mark this one because this this has been an amazing Again, show. Again, I think this is the most important show this, we've ever done. This has been yeah. an yeah. amazing yeah. show. All right, we'll wrap it up. Still on the way. More interviews. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Arlington, Texas at Big 12 Media Days. This segment presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's keep the interviews rolling, and we welcome in now the first member of the Kansas football squad that we have spoken with. He is the running back, Devin Neal. Devin, welcome to BYU Sports up, Nation. Devin? Thank you for having me. How y'all doing today? Hey, we're, we're stoked we're, to be here. Man. We're excited. You always oh, yeah. in a Power 5 league. We've waited for this for a long time. Oh, yeah. What's it Without. like for you guys welcoming in the new four? Yeah, I mean, I just think it's a cool experience, you know, just kind of playing different teams, new opportunities, playing at different stadiums. I mean, that's just what it's all about. So it's pretty cool to welcome you guys in. Yeah. Well, BYU's Big 12 opener is in Lawrence yeah. uh, against Kansas. Yes, sir. And, um, you know, needless to say, and this is probably an understatement, but you really burst onto the scene early last season. No doubt. And became, you know, just a dynamic, fun offense to watch. So what what's going to make this Kansas team a little bit maybe even better than where you were last year? Yeah, I mean, I just think it comes down to experience, honestly, and, you know, it's the name of the game, honestly. It's like how, how many years can you stack with the same guys and, 
you know, we only lose one guy in offense this year. And, you know, with Earl and, you know, he actually got drafted by the Cowboys or didn't get drafted, got picked up by the Cowboys. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're bringing back a ton of experience on offense and defense. And it's just going to be a special year, and we're excited to play again. Yeah, a 1,000-yard year, uh, 6.1 yards per carry. How, how much better do you feel you can be? Because that was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I just think I have more confidence. I'm starting to know a lot of football, just knowing the game. And it's just all coming a lot slower to me. Um, now than it was, you know, a year ago and even before then. So, What do BYU fans, and frankly all four of the new schools, need to know about Kansas football, and specifically your quarterback, Jalen Daniels? <laughs> um, That's legit, man. I would probably say, you know, they're going to get a lot of energy from our fan base now, especially just because we're on the up and coming again. Yeah. And, um, you know, we we sold out a few games last year, and those games were rocking. I mean, we brought college game day. That was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was a great experience. So, um, they're going to get a lot of energy from those guys. And, you know, also with Jalen, they're going to get a dynamic guy. I mean, he can do it all. And so it's going to be special watching him, you know, put on another performance. And, you know, just being behind him is kind of a cool – I get a front row seat, so it's really special to watch him work. We both got to figure out how to beat Arkansas, by the way. Uh, BYU's got him <laughs> in week three. It was the, the shootouts with them were crazy. That bowl yeah. game was crazy. Yeah, I mean, I've never been part of a game like that in my life. I mean, just – I mean, we could have quit just like that. I mean, it's a bowl game. Some people are like, this game doesn't matter, and but not to us. I mean, it was a really special moment for us to get back in that game and, you know, hopefully when obviously it didn't come down to winning it, but um, just getting back into that game was important for us. We'll figure it out in week three, and then we'll <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll yeah. let you know yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. shortly there. We're, we're going to, to Fayetteville this year. Yes. Yeah. Kansas running back Devin Neal is on BYU Sports Nation. As you look at BYU, just your general – overall sense of that program what, what what do you see when you look at the the logo the brand and the team yeah. that comes into the conference you know i'm i've always seen that team you know as like just a group of guys who just know how to fight you know and they're they've always been really good to me you know every time you just sneak on the tv and you see them um when we have the chance to you know and, and one thing that always stands out to me is just how bought in the fan base is you know i always see just the crowd's going crazy and you know I always wanted to play there and it just looks really cool and now we have the opportunity to play there eventually um obviously it won't be this year but next year will be the chance to play them but um it, it we just know what they're about and we know they're going to be a tough group of guys to beat and you know that's what's going to be fun this year when we play them September 23rd is marked on the calendar <laughs> yeah in Lawrence it's going to be a ton of fun what, what's it like to have expectation a little bit now? Because yeah. your offense is one of the best in the country. Certainly if the defense is a little bit better, that can change things no quite doubt. a bit. Um, someone told me one time that, you know, pressure is a privilege. And, you know, I take that to heart is because, like, now we've done something and now we've gotten to the point where, you know, we're a name and we're respected. Yeah. So um, that's what's really cool. And, you know, we worked really hard for that. But, you know, we only won six games at the same time. And so we just want to build on that. We're working extremely hard this summer, this offseason. We just stepped it up even more. So we're ready to play. And Devin Neal is doing his best along with his team to make sure that Kansas is not just a basketball school, right? No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> What's that like on campus, by the way, as football sort of emerges now and grows? Yeah, I mean, I just there's a certain buzz around campus, you know, and when everyone's excited all year round, you know, it, you don't have that doomy, gloomy look of fans waiting for basketball season. They're excited to get to football games. And, you know, that just gives us more confidence and just – it allows us to play more free. Hey, hopefully more college game day in Lawrence, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was really fun. Devin, we appreciate the time, man. Thank you, guys. Best it was, it was a year. pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Great, great to have, have you on today. BYU TV and BYU Sports Get off Nation. your feet. Get some snacks. Take it easy. <laughs> got a lot of interviews, right? <laughs> no yeah, doubt. No doubt. Thanks, Thank you. Devin. All right, uh, Jeremy, we've got about 60 seconds to wrap this thing up, man. But uh, what, a, what a fun show. Super fun. Um, great to be, obviously, in the Big 12 to plug in. Everyone's been super f professional. This has been a bigger, better event than I think I even expected. I don't even know what I expected, per se. But to be here uh, at AT&T Stadium and plug into the league and talk to guys like Devin and Quinn and, and Sark and Sonny and Bud Clark, we got an interview with that we recorded that will air another day. Safety for TCU. Yeah, safety yeah. for TCU. It's just awesome, and this is day one of three here. We'll be here tomorrow for day two, and then day three. Everyone's gone, but we're going to stay to kind of recap things, and we're trying our best to just stay inside because it's 105 degrees with humidity this week in Arlington, so the more we can stay in this air-conditioned room, I think it's good for all of us, but we're going to have to go outside on Friday. So, <laughs> Dave and Chef, you got to prepare yourselves, okay? 
We're going to have the misters going, right? They, we've got to find them somewhere in the, you think ba- we're getting the, misters? In the bowels of AT&T Now that we're in a Power 5 League, we're getting misters? That's great. <laughs> yeah, we've up to the budget, right? <laughs> Just make a, make a nice little easy call to Jerry Jones, and we'll, we'll make it happen, man. Do you need me to text him right now? <laughs> he might be upstairs. Oh, great stuff. Um, that wraps up uh, what has been a really, really fun hour of live BYU Sports Nation. Much more to come on our social accounts. Uh, we're going to do a ton of interviews. We'll show you the best of the best as we push forward for two more days. It's going to be awesome. Sorry to Dennis. We ran out of time. You're not in the Power 5 League, Dennis. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're in the Mad <laughs> Or Jerem. I am Spencer. Let, let, let's shout out to that entire 2009 football team for BYU that won here against Oklahoma. 